Yeah, so you're all very welcome to our latest uh, interview in our Zoom series, which we've been doing during uh, lockdown and during this uh, strange times, these unprecedented times. And I'm very, very happy to be joined um, from Fermanagh this evening by Anya McGovern and Sarah, or Sarah Britton. So uh, welcome, ladies. How are you both doing? Best. Thanks very much. Well, very good. Good to have you on board. Um, Anya, I'm going to start with your good self. Um, you're working as an outreach worker in Enniskillen for children with uh, additional needs. So how are things in terms of work and how has life changed during these uh, these strange times? Well, just with the children, you know, with the school has been off, so we've been off too, you know, because we haven't been fit to take them out. But I suppose going back, like trying to get back into the swing of things with them will be hard, you know, even for the, their life routine, you know, things like we would have been doing, you know, like the lack of going swimming, you know, or going around the shops or doing my activities, you know, like the gym or that there, you know, like they're not fit to do that themselves, you know, outside of but everything being in lockdown. And it'll just be weird for them to get back out and do week camps and all for the summer. Mm. So they get back out and it'll be good for them. You know, and then for, for them to get back into routine at school come September time, or if they get back into routine at school, it'll be hard for them. But sure, I think everyone's in the same boat. Maybe it's just a bit more difficult for them. Uh, how are you finding everything? Oh, best. Uh, getting on with it. Sure, what can you do? You have to get on with it. Be, it's good there that there last week having the a lift now in the club training. We can start again in three weeks. So we have to get back out you know, and get the club training, so at least it'll something get bring us all together. You know, everyone's kind of been in the same situation, not been fit to go anywhere, not been fit to do anything. So I think we're given the go ahead for a club training, it'd be nice to get back out and you know, get out with the gear and you know again and just go train. Well, absolutely. Sarah, how have you found um living in a I suppose a virtual world for the last little while in terms of keeping in touch with your teammates and friends? How how have you found it all? Yeah, it's been very, very strange. Um I suppose we kind of handled it well with like communication along the like group chats and stuff and like training sessions online, but it is very weird not seeing a lot of people. I suppose I'm in the kind of outskirts of Fermanagh compared to like a lot of the teams. So it's weird not being able to bump into them anywhere, even at the local shop. So um, it is weird, but I think it's just it's something everyone's had to deal with. But I'm, it is glad, like Ollie said, to like, have a date to look forward to to get back at trainings and things. So. How have you been filling your days, Sarah? Because you're waiting on uh, some uh, pretty important results to come through at the moment. Yeah, definitely. I think, obviously, at the start of lockdown, I was still in test and things, revision. Now that that's finished, I did my last exam there a few weeks ago. I've just been looking for anything to do, picking up any project outside the house or cleaning my room every day. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> yeah, I think now it's finally getting to the part where I'm looking forward to get back to reality um have my uni results for final year at the end of the month so it'll be good to get finally so another thing to look forward to but also dreading at the same time i'm yeah. sure it'll go, go fine i'm sure it will i will wish you well um you uh you finished your final year of food quality safety and nutrition at queen so what, what took you into that, that that um that line of studies sarah what, where did that interest stem from um I've always been really interested in food and like especially being sporty I think that's been a big kind of um kind of direction I wanted to take it in more like sports nutrition stuff and then when I was doing research I seen um it available in Queens and it kind of ties in quality safety and nutrition definitely but um it's just as soon as I was reading kind of what it's all about, I, I just fell in love with the course and um, it's really sad for it to come to an end, but I'm looking forward to now um, just going into the whole field of it now. Um, I think it's just something I've been really into meal prep, learn about food, know what food does. And then, yeah, it's just been really interesting because it's something that from a young age, I've been, obviously everybody eats food at a young age. <laughs> um have been really interesting so it's nice to kind of learn more about it and I think as well especially in sport a lot of people would ask my opinion my friends and all really into just anything about their nutritional needs and stuff and it's so fun to actually be able to answer like a lot of their questions so um yeah that's just basically it brilliant honestly popping in some um tips and recipes into the group <laughs> chat is she I probably don't follow my own advice as often as I should but <laughs> it is it's very we nice. treats now, Sarah, when we get back out yeah. of training. <laughs> so what's a, what's a good cheat meal that people can have, Sarah? Because I do like a cheat oh. meal, I have to say now and again, to be honest. 
I feel like during this lockdown, all my meals have been cheap so far. <laughs> I think in uni, I had such good routine of buying my own shopping, eating healthy, prepping it, and all having a system. And now I'm just let loose in lockdown. So <laughs> I'm really going to need to start getting back onto the real. I think we're all in the same boat, to be honest with you. Um, so you, you played four years of football, obviously, with Queen's as well. Um, you won an O'Connor Shield along the way as well, Sarah. Yes, I won that in my second year playing. I think um, it was it's definitely the highlight. Um, I remember my first year of university football, I never really, I never knew about the O'Connor Cup or anything about it. And it was just so, like the first year, all the older girls final year were just talking about the weekend and all. We didn't get it in our first year of football. And then seeing us like getting closer and closer in the second year, um, just you just jump on it. Like it's just such an excitement, top class football. You're playing with girls from all over, and just an unbelievable standard. So, uh, winning the shield in second year was amazing. Um, we was also captained by one of my Fermanagh teammates, um, Joanne Doonan. Who? Um, How is How was she? That, that was great doing it with her and another Fermanagh woman, Sarah Goslin, that's also on the team. So. It was nice having like the sport with them as well and enjoying it with them. So um, that was class in second year. And then third year, we got close. We were in the Connor Cup semi-final, but um, beat by UL, who went on to smash the whole competition. So, yeah, I was at that game, actually, yeah. yeah. Yeah, even playing against those teams, like it's just amazing. Like sometimes you just really have to stop and take it all in. Like it's great competition. You're playing with girls that you never get the chance to even come up against. And... Um, football so it, it just really was a great experience and then this year was obviously cut short which is sad but um it just great uni football is definitely the best thing about it like oh, so short but it's so enjoyable good good and i wish you well i hope the results go to plan i'm sure i'm sure <laughs> they will um you went to college in sligo on yeah i did yeah um done social studies down there and i done four years but but i never done the football at it <laughs> did you did you play football there no, I never, I used for, I done placement to see at home, so I only okay. stayed down one year, but I, because I drove up and down, because Canali is not, would only be about 45 minutes, so I drove up and down, because then I had been placement then and in Skillen, so I only actually stayed down in my final year. Okay. So, so you've been on the Fermanagh panel though since uh, 2011, you've played county since 2011. I, and I've seen I've seen you playing a few times, and there's been some some highs and some lows along the way. You know, bouncing up and down through the grades. It's been a fair journey for you, hasn't it? Definitely. Um, I would definitely say definitely highs, and then there's been some lows definitely along the way with us. I suppose when I started out, you know, at the beginning, um, it was probably you know first or second year. You know, it's just there. You know, you know, you're on your sub and getting to see all the older girls and. You know, the drive within them to get to Crow Park like it was unreal and then 2014 we built an awful bit of pressure up onto ourselves got to Crow Park and then I think we were all disappointed in ourselves and how that went but I think for all the older girls to get there you know because they'd all been there in 2009 too mm. and they had the hunger like for us the younger ones coming in at that stage which most of our girls are still there now in this year's plan that was there in well in 2014 is right lock was still there um, and then for us then to drive on and say for 2017 to get back to Pro Park again and you know then we didn't win it on the day but we won it then after the replay but then for now for there's some some of the new batch of girls that come in this year it's like bringing young ones in completely for us say to show the younger girls what it's like to get the drive to go to Pro Park and hopefully they'll be fit to experience it too you know and definitely their highs are getting to Pro Park with the lows you know like you have to take the good with the bad and yeah. thankfully we're and again, you know, like we had a good year there in 2017 and we're rebuilding since that. But last year, like we've built up and we had a great league campaign, like and then the same with the Ulster and the All-Ireland. So we just have to build again. Like we don't start off great this year, you know, with the league. We were going rightly you know, on Division 3 and we now just the way work, things worked out, we've stayed in it. So then like we just build now and we get back out in September. You were captain in 2017, aren't you? Yeah, I was, yeah. That, that, was, that was proud... I mean, I saw I, I I was at the semi final as well, which was a bit of a, a cliffhanger. Um, I, I think unfortunately you, you had to spend a little bit of time looking on from the sideline during that game as well. I was actually watching you when you were on when you were when you were Sinbin. You were so nervous, like I like I was like, oh, what? Do you know, it, it, it's tough watching on. I'm sure when you're in that situation because it was such a cliffhanger of a game on you. I think that was nearly worse because 
the guilt, you know, for getting thin when the girls were down <laughs> one player, and then they cut it was so tight, it was like, Jesus Christ, if we don't get the crowbar bar <laughs> because of me, because that's what you felt, like you felt it was all your fault. So, um, but yeah, no, thankfully we got over the line that day now, but um, yeah, no, God, that game against London, I think everyone will agree, that was probably one of the nail biting games we've ever been in. It was a great game, it was a great game. And then the final as well, you needed a, a last gas penalty as well to, to get a replay. It was an incredible um, last couple of games for you, and, and then obviously going up to Clonus for the replay. Yeah, no, uh, definitely. I think, like, obviously playing in Crow Park was great, like, but then to have the replay in Clonus where we got, like, we were on the pitch afterwards for an hour with your whole family and friends, you know, like, in Crow Park that wouldn't happen. It would have been lovely to lift the cup, like, in Crow Park. But I think for everyone then, after just being such a cliffhanger for an All-Iron semi-final and then the way the All-Iron final went to go to a replay, to get it back to a replay, then, like, for the game to go ahead. And then we, we played so well, I think, in the replay as a team then, because we knew we hadn't so what we could do in Pro Park and then I think then just for everyone to be there, you know, as a group, all of us and then with our family and friends it made it extra special. So Sarah, you're you're on the panel since twenty fifteen, so um you've obviously seen plenty over the last few years as well. Sharon Murphy's penalty in that game as well, that that, that I like Talk about a moment uh, that you're under immense pressure and to step up and be so ice cool with it. Sarah, what do you remember of that? Um, I remember just coming on and we got like the turnover and everything coming down. It was such a tight game and then this all happening, everybody just what's going on and I remember um um the coaches coming on to have an word with Sean. Like she was very kind of like she was obviously nervous but she was very confident and cool mm. and collected and it just like that kind of leadership she took and I was like quite near like being in the board line and it just it was so admirable and I think everyone knowing when she was stepping up to it like everyone's obviously on edge and nervous but we also had such like confidence in her so I think um yeah like it was just it was very intense very like I couldn't have done it myself like she was just is the right person doing the job there yeah, she played an absolute blinder. It was uh, it was immense, immense moment under immense pressure. I have to say, um, Anya, you've been around the pitch. I mean, you've you've fulfilled various different positions for for Mano. Where where do you feel most at home on the field? Or is is it the case that if as long as I get a jersey, I don't really mind where I go? Oh well, I suppose at this stage, I if you get a jersey, you're happy enough <laughs> to get played. Like. But uh, no, probably the back line, like I prefer the back, like um, midfield, you need an engine and let's just say my age, I'm clocking up and I don't have that engine anymore. But uh, no, I prefer the backs, you know, but um, I want to go anywhere and just be happy enough to get a jersey sort of bit. Uh, Sarah, players... It doesn't stop her getting on the end of a, a lot of scores this year. <laughs> Absolutely. There you go. There's, there's still plenty of an engine left. Don't be worrying on you. Um, Sarah, you're obviously more used to, to, to the other end of the pitch and, and uh, trying to get on the score sheet. Can I ask you, you've kind of taught us a, a little through your, your, your journey, through your studies and how you got interested in, in, in nutrition um, and good nutrition. Your football background, was there football in your family? Uh, were you from a sporting family? How did that interest uh, manifest itself? Yeah, um, my dad would be like my biggest role model. He's a very sporty person. Um, he played a lot when he was younger. He actually moved when he was young to America. Played a lot out yeah. in like San Diego and stuff. But he's always had interest. My mom, on the other hand, um, from California, so she never grew up with any of that kind of football. But like coming up here, she's fell in love with the game and pushes it. She played a wee bit herself as well when she came over, which is wow. in like her later, later age so I was almost teaching her at a young age um which is fun but my brothers and sisters would also be very sporty my younger brother Jacob um plays a lot of Gaelic now he was very soccer up until about last year and I definitely edged him to get back into Gaelic um so I think me and him he's a year younger than me are very into like our football now but um yeah I think we've always been athletic based with like cost country and things so that kind of like really helped our like and as soon as we started like football really we just kind of um have been going from that since that's an unbelievable family background how did how did mum and dad meet each other then sarah what was um, did they ever tell you about the the first meeting yeah my dad moved out when he was about 17 to america and um he was in new york for the start and then he ended up going to san diego my mom's from um 
California in around there and they just met out there and had my brother and sister and then moved in over to Ireland and had me and my other siblings so I've always lived here which is nice having like the opportunity to live here but we always go back and forth. Oh, that's lovely. That's a, that's deadly, actually. Um, on to yourself, what was the what was the genesis for football in in, in your background? Um, Daddy, you know, he would be keen into it. You know, mommy, like Sarah's mother, wouldn't. She goes to the games, but now let's just say it, she's not really into it. You know, but oh, Daddy would have been all into it. You know, that kind of way. And I have brought two brothers and two sisters. Like we would all been into it. You know, like growing up, sure. That's after school, you know, don't see your friends, you would have went to the train, you're not going to kept at it. Um, I'm the only one, one of, one of my brothers too, stuck at it now. But um, I suppose it's just, I think it was the way in the community when you live kind of rural, not in the town, you know, the only place to go in the evenings was say to the football field, you know. So I think that's how I, I just stuck at it. So it ended up being off. And on your um, a mum as well. Uh-huh. Uh, Kayla is 18 months, am I right in saying that now? Yeah, 18 months now, yeah. There was a lovely picture after, I think it was the semi-final, the All-Ireland semi-final last year where, where you, you had her in your arms. I, I think we actually put it up on Instagram and there was all the oohs and ahs and, and the cooing about it. <laughs> she's, she's obviously a very, very special little girl to you, Anya. How, how has motherhood treated you? How have you found all that? the best yeah I know definitely um I suppose having her you know uh in playing in the football after it you know it's nice to get back out but it's obviously a special bond realize like beforehand probably all I ever done was say go out with your friends you know whatever and you'd football whereas now like you you have mommy land and then you switch off you know say to go to football but obviously you always have that at the back of your head you have to kill is number one and then football is number two you know whereas beforehand probably football was number one you know that kind of way so uh, it's changed, but obviously you still you prioritize everything. Like it's everyone has different commitments in their life, you know, and just you know what's important to you. How, where did we? What did we do with all the time we had on oh, before becoming parents? I have no idea, to be honest. It's crazy, crazy at times, isn't it? It'll be hard for all the children to get used to going back to work and not having the times with mommy and daddy. Let me tell you that. I know that first day back at crash now or back to school, there'll be tears. I'm sure <laughs> they'll, they'll be flowing. Um, Division four champions last year as well, Anya. How how good was that? Yeah, that was only the I think the second league final I, we've ever been involved in. My time, um, and we didn't we lost the other one uh, back in I think that was 2011. The first year was out. Uh, it was brilliant to get back up. You know, after playing, we had played in Division Three before. Uh, my time, it's great to get back up because you're playing at a higher standard, the standards that we want to put ourselves at. Mm. You know, the girls as a group, we want to back up. We want to be playing at a higher standard, and the only way to do that is by competing in Division Three and pushing on up to Division Two, and hopefully someday in the near future, man and ladies will be playing in Division One football too. Well, I like that attitude. I like that attitude. Sarah, it was a lovely sunny day um, in Clonus again for that final last year, and it was Antrim. And I swear to God, I must have been writing about yourselves and Antrim playing each other God, God knows how many times last year. There was a real little rivalry developed there, Sarah. Yes, definitely. I think it's one of those things. So, like, every time we played them, was like playing them for the first time. Like, you just want to go out and do your best. But, um, yeah, it was interesting because you kept thinking you were learning about them but every time you went out it was just on the day a different match so no matter how many times we played them everything could have went either way it was always very tight with us um it was quite like in 2017 we were, they had the exact same problem with like dairy we kept meeting them but every time yeah, yeah. It was still just as tough um but yeah it's so good to get in the like the better side of it because it always has been like so neck and neck no team either, like ever run away with it either side so it kept it fresh kept it like the fire in us you know nobody we try not to come complacent when we were getting the leads you know so um it was just like it was just really good especially beating another like us like the Ulster team was just it was a great one <laughs> yeah hello it's kind of like hello you again <laughs> trotting into the corner <laughs> Pick up your, the, the same person, you've probably marked three or four times already. Mm -hmm. Anya, when you're in that situation, um, from a tactical point of view, if you know you've had the upper hand on a team before, uh, what's the temptation? Do you stick or twist or do you try something new or do you rely on what you know? It's a, it must be kind of a little bit of a conundrum when you're coming up against the same opposition over and over again. 
Oh, definitely. And I think that's something with the management team where we have man and they're very good at that, you know, so trying not to be readable or predictable, you know, so that we go out and we can play a different team or line girls out in different positions, you know, so that they have the other management trying to work out. And then for us trying to pick up, get different girls to pick up girls of the, like the opposite team, like the lack of Antrim, but like for some of them then too, like say you got to match that someone was getting on top of someone, you know, like obviously you'd want to keep that person mark and that other player so that they can null, nullify them within the game. But then it, it's the same thing because they're going to be trying to nullify your players. But I suppose mm. that was the thing, changing things up, which uh, the management team was very good at that, you know, and trying to keep things fresh and trying to keep the other team guessing what we were going to be doing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Arnie, can I take you back to Crow Park last September? And Sorry. <laughs> and, and, you know, we talk about highs and lows and ups and downs. What, what, was, what was that feeling like at, uh, at the final whistle? I know, I think you'd played in the semi-final, but maybe missed out for the final and came on for the last couple of minutes. How did, how did you manage to, to deal with all of that? Oh God, the disappointment, you know, for the whole team, for the whole girls, you know, like I think everyone, ourselves, like I think there was such hype when yet again, like the semi-final was such a tight game, like we such a hard run in, to it, you know, into the final, and then just not to perform, you know, to the standard that the girls know that they can perform, you know, it just didn't happen on the day, and like, yes, you take the good with the bad, but you can't always say that, like, it just didn't happen, like, loud, we're the better team, and that was it on the day, but if man and ladies, like, the whole, as a group, like, we had it turned up to the way we could, and the way we will again, you know, it could have been a completely different result, I think it was just hard to take, because it had been, like, it took a year to get there, but, um, I think you you always you either win or you learn. Like, and I think as a group, as a whole, for us this year, we learn from last year and we'll push on then whenever it does start up again this year. It's good stuff, and we're looking forward to it all starting back up as well. Um, Sarah, you were in America last summer. Mm-hmm. What was uh, so uh, obviously you're you're well used to the to the trip to America, but I, I, did that mean that you missed out on on the final? Yeah, I got back just, I think it was a few, a day or two, it was a day before the um, semi-final. So I just got back and was able to go out. Um, management, like Johnny, welcomed me back, like very, like well, with open arms to come and support the girls. And um, it was really good because I didn't know if I'd have the opportunity to be able to come back to the team again. And um, it was just so great to see how well they'd come on and stuff. Um, it was heartbreaking, but... To like miss out in that, but I knew like I, it was kind of my only opportunity to go do that sure. whole summer before I go to work in life. But um, it was so good to get back and to be able to get behind the girls and um, just see how well they've all been getting on. And I was supporting them out there. It's a bit tricky sometimes with the time zones, but I like every time that they were up in a match, it was really good to be able to like watch on or like get updates on like Twitter. So. Um, I still felt very involved and I was in the group chat and stuff so coming back was just a great boost and I was just straight into it so again so it was really nice Um, didn't feel like if, like the whole summer went in a blink of an eye I just felt like welcome back nothing I rolled up to training like before the semi-final I just thought like nothing had changed it was it was great and then to like see the girls do well in the semi-final thing was just I like watching from the sideline and I think it was just so like I was just like a wee Oh, I couldn't believe it. Like, I was just so happy and, like, no, so stress-free, you know, not nervous or anything. And it was just, like, it was a really different experience, but I, I really loved it. And then watching the semi-final, or the final was heartbreaking. But, again, it was so nice to be able to be still part of the team and grow Park and all. Like, so, um, yeah, I really was happy about it. Uh, where, where did your travels take you, Sarah? Um, I went over to New York, New York um, with one of um, my teammates from Queens, who's from Monaghan. Um, she and I went over. We played a wee bit of football at the start, but we weren't able to get transfers in to like, actually compete, which was sad. But um, yeah, we stayed in New York for about two months, and then we went out to San Diego, where my brother lives, and we stayed out there just for a few weeks for like holiday, and we played a bit of like, soccer. Um, on Sundays with him, we we just couldn't get away from the sport. <laughs> oh, um, yeah, it was a great, great summer. Oh, New York is amazing. I'd love to go back there sometime. I actually got engaged in New York, believe it or not. Oh, no. There's a, <laughs> a fun fact. Um, <laughs> on yourself, did you ever get away for a summer or travel, see a bit of the world, or what was your 
No, no, I was too much of a home bird. No, I never went anywhere just for my holidays to stay in or the like of that. No, I never went traveling or that. That's my younger sister's trait for the family. She's the one that travels the world. Okay, she's got the travel ball. Very good. Um, Anya, you've um, obviously played a good bit of club football, which is a pretty obvious statement, and played in, um, you've won championships, contested Ulster finals. Um, I'm just looking at the bio, you haven't won a club Ulster yet, so that's a, a, a tick you'd like to get on the CV as well. How, how are things at club level? I mean, I'm sure there's a separate county WhatsApp group and a separate club WhatsApp group, so yeah. it looks like club is coming back first on you, so you're, you're obviously looking forward to that immensely. Definitely, I back to get back to any football, but yeah, no, I think it'd be nice for us all to get back to club. Like, it would be great to get back out to county and club at the same time, but I think just to get back out to anything, I think club would be nice because there's eight or nine of us of Canali girls on this man. Yes. Um, so I think it'd be yeah. nice for us to have you know the breaks say, or 10 weeks to be training just with club because it's obviously you go to county force and then you kind of come back to your club, which it's hard then to get a club train all of us there at the same night or whatever so I think it'll be nice to have that little bit of a break just with all the club girls and build back up and it would be lovely to win an Ulster club um, final but uh, we've been there we've got cloaks we've got mm-hmm. the final so our next one is just take it over the line it's hugely competitive in, in Ulster no matter what the grade junior intermediate senior it's just a it's doggy dog it's it's hugely competitive okay, it's that, yeah, it is brilliant to say you wouldn't like it to be like a walk over either that you just go out every year and win an Ulster club title, you know, like that wouldn't be good either. But I think it is definitely, it's competitive and we have been un, like unfortunate, you know, not to win one. But I think um, it's definitely there, you know, we've been there, what is it, the last last four years we've been to three of them, three Ulster club. I'm just lost out like last year. Yeah, three uh, Ulster clubs, yeah. Uh, extra went to extra time and we lost. In the year before that, in 2018, I, I wasn't playing, but uh, the girls just lost out, like literally. I think it was a point in the last kick of the game, and you know, heartbreaking for them, you know, that way. So, but hopefully, we will get over the line. And your club, Sarah, how are things at club level, and what, what are the, the hopes and dreams and, and, and goals for you guys? Uh, yeah, club's very good. Uh, like, I come from like, quite a small club. Um, so we'd be very like young at the minute. So like it's so good seeing like the talent coming up. Um, we are an intermediate and we've been like competing well. I think all teams in like for Man are very close, like um, in that kind of level. So it, we keep coming close and things. So it'd be nice to um, get a championship, um, like one this year or next year, I suppose. Like, but. Um, it's nice. I'm looking forward to getting out because um, it is hard with county to get out, especially when I was in Belfast. I wasn't able to like travel down as much. So it's, it's going to be nice to be able to get back to them um, sooner rather than later. And unlike Anya, I'm the only one from county in my club. So I don't get that to see them as often as I would like to. So it is it is going to be good to get back and get trained with them. They're so good. Um, Stay in, we stay in touch over like the WhatsApps and stuff now, so um, it'll just be good to get back into the routine of going down to the club with everyone and training Ad- again. Adarney St. Joseph's, so I pronounced that right. I think you're probably better at pronouncing the club name than me. Adarney, yeah. Adarney, okay, good. Well, tell me a little bit about the club, Sarah. Size, location, what's the catchment area there? Yeah, so I would be kind of outside the club in like Bow Island. Um, we're kind of like it'd be a relatively small club we kind of are more like the outskirts of like Edderney as well like um Abo Island and Lack and all um there would be there would be a very like small club but especially like for the the ladies um would be struggling with numbers but like not in the recent years that they've been building on them which is so good to see and we're getting a lot of like um girls out that used to play and now I haven't played in years but are coming out again which is it's just so good to like see people coming back because like especially for girls football I feel like a lot of girls would quit early on and like leave football behind them but seeing it come back into the club is just like it's really really nice to see um and especially like coming up from the younger age groups we like our team would be like very full of like young younger girls which um it's a great seeing the talent come through now um very hopeful but yeah we'd be a relatively small club but like um uh, yeah, we're just built up from 
all, all age groups and all areas. Brilliant. It's nice. Brilliant. And what are the numbers like in uh, Canali, Anya? How are things going? Uh, yeah, no, Canali, we're lucky enough. We have good numbers. We do go. We, be, we have a lot of numbers compared to a lot of the other ladies' clubs within Fermanagh. Um, our, our seniors grow good. Like we'd have, say, 20, 25, maybe to 28 to 30, just depending on the panel, panel depending each year who we have available. Uh, our underage would be good. Like, um, We've been building up a long time for their for their minors, number sixteen, number fourteen. There's good competition there and good high numbers there, so it's good and always pushing into the senior scene, which is always good for anyone pushing. The younger ones are definitely pushing the older ones on at club level. You know, looking for their places, not just like county too, like <laughs> all the younger ones and some of the younger ones from Canali pushing uh, the older ones out, like myself. You know, at Manitou pushing for places, which is great to see it. You know, for it's always good if there's competition if it's for places and for jerseys, that if it's just like a matter of you're going to get a jersey, they're not the same balls or that at training, so it's good to have competition for your jersey. Um, I'm going to finish up with um, some notes as well that Johnny sent on, right? So this is this is Johnny's description of you guys, right? So I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to put Sarah's description to you, Anya, and vice versa, right? So this is Sarah, uh, Anya. This is what Johnny says about Sarah. Sarah is a speedy forward, very dangerous, and a great ball carrier. She was having an impressive league campaign before the COVID outbreak, a very pleasant and coachable player who has the ability to make a big contribution for the team. Anya, he's spot on, is he? Spot on, 100%. No, definitely. I totally agree with that. Uh, Sarah definitely will be up and coming for Fermanagh, so she is, and she'll definitely knock down a uh, jersey, no problem, when, hopefully when COVID starts or we get back up playing now in September again. So I, let's just say I would like to mark and Sarah on the football field anywhere the speed. <laughs> Very good. Um, Sarah, this is what Johnny has to say, uh, says about Anya, okay? A dependable and versatile player, equally at home in midfield or anywhere in defence, a fantastic leader on and off the field. She is a key member of our setup. 100%. Like, I, I find it funny to say that she says that she wouldn't want to mark me because I would not want to be marking her. <laughs> really. and, um, she always gives her all. She's such a leader in the like squad. Like, anything on his as goes. Like, when she talks, everybody listens, kind of player. Like, um, she's just such a role model. Like, and I think everybody kind of looks up to her. Brilliant. Johnny was looking forward to the chat now. So, I know what the, one of the very first matchups is back at training. Anyway, I'm presuming. <laughs> 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 so Johnny there you have it we've sorted out a, a good matchup when you get back up and running um, guys it's been great talking to you I've, I've enjoyed the chat immensely great to see two smiling faces and getting on with life and getting through it and uh, I wish you well and we look forward to seeing you doing what you do best when we're back up and running playing football for club and county so Sarah Britton and Anya McGovern thank you so much and take care of yourselves and thanks for coming on this evening thank you thank you thanks so much